Hello and welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. In today's episode, I'm going to tackle some interesting topics that don't get a lot of attention, but these topics will help you a lot in your understanding of things like neurophysiology and what an action potential really is. Um, we are going to do this qualitatively, and I'm even going to show you some quantitative stuff towards the end, and don't worry, we're going to do it Penguin Prof style. As always, I'm going to ask for your support. If you find these videos helpful, take a second, click those buttons. Just do it right now. It helps a lot. Now you want to stay tuned because I am going to explain equilibrium potentials as well as the concept of driving force. These are really important for physiology students to get. You're going to see tables like this and you're going to have this little column here, the equilibrium potential of these various ions. And you should be wondering what these numbers mean, why we make such a big deal about them, and how they are calculated. And you know, if you can understand that, it's going to help you a lot in understanding things like when you look at the action potential, for example, why is the driving force for sodium so high when the membrane is at rest, and yet it drops at the peak of the action potential. So. You know, it, it's kind of confusing. Students will just memorize this, but not have any sense of what it means. And of course, I, I hate memorization. So we're going to really get into why ions move in the direction that they do. Now, please recall ions have to move through specialized channels. These are proteins in the cell membrane that are very specific to particular ions. But they are just like little doors, right? The ions are actually moving on their own in response to concentration gradients as well as voltage gradients. If this is not a familiar idea for you, you will want to check out my video on the action potential. Of course, I will link that below. But the idea here is how many ions move? Do they ever reach a point where they stop moving? And do you really need physics to get an understanding of all of this? You do need some physics in order to calculate these equilibrium potentials, but you really don't need physics to understand the general concept. And that's what I want to do right now. So I'm going to use an analogy that everyone can relate to because we all face it in life. This has to do with your happiness and where you are in your life compared to where you wish you were. So if we were to put your happiness on a graph, way up here we're going to have your magical happy place in life where everything is perfect. So you want to imagine your job, your living situation, your relationships, everything, however you want to picture it. Um, I asked Flops, of course, he, gosh, he's actually done a lot of these things. Um, his life is pretty awesome. You know, he also makes a great dive buddy because he doesn't need any dive gear. But anyway, however that perfection looks for you, you can call it nirvana if you want. Put that on the graph, okay? And we're going to look at two scenarios. In scenario A, your life is almost perfect, okay? So you're very close to that magical happy place, you know? Maybe your job is great, your relationships are great, but maybe just, you know, there's something bugging you. You can't seem to, I don't know, get rid of your crazy Uncle Joe or, you know, something like that. But the idea is life is awesome. And what I want you to see is that your driving force for change in your life at this point is very small. So by driving force, I mean how much energy are you going to put into making big changes in your life? For example, you know, you're probably not going to quit your great job or break up with your fabulous partner. You know what I mean? You're not going to do anything dramatic because your life is almost perfect. So your driving force for change is small. Now, we're going to compare this to scenario B. In scenario B, basically, life sucks, okay? So things are really awful, terrible relationships, terrible living situation. You're failing every class. Okay, hopefully, you have not been in such a terrible place in life. But the point is, just imagine it for our purposes, okay? And the idea here is that the driving force for change, if you are miserable and your life sucks, the driving force is huge, okay? Because the difference between where you are and where you want to be 
is enormous. And that is the key thing to understand. So where your life is, is always changing. Your magical happy place, we're going to call your equilibrium point or E sub U. Okay, for the purposes of this analogy, you have to imagine that that does not change. Okay, your equilibrium point is fixed. Okay, in real life, obviously that's not true, but just go with me on this. Okay, so the difference between where you are and where you wish you were, that is the driving force for change. If you understand that, then all of this ion business will make sense. Okay, let's do this for membrane voltage. Now, where the membrane voltage actually is, is going to be changing, but for any given ion, there will be an equilibrium point. That is the ion's happy place, and that is fixed. The driving force that the ion will have is the difference between where the membrane voltage is and the ion's equilibrium point. So, as you notice, the membrane voltage here is getting closer and closer to the ion's equilibrium, and you notice that driving force arrow is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. If the membrane voltage actually hits the ion's equilibrium point, the driving force for the ion is zero. So let's go back to those definitions. The equilibrium potential is the membrane potential at which there's no net flow. Right? Because that's the happy point. The driving force is the difference between the ion's equilibrium potential and where the membrane potential actually is. All right, in order to get a better picture, let's look at sodium and potassium, and we're going to look at both of them when a cell is at rest and at the peak of the action potential. All right, here we go. So when the cell is at rest, and we say on average, it's going to have minus 70 millivolts inside negative. Okay, that's what that means. Now, way up here at the top is sodium's equilibrium potential at plus 60. What that means is that sodium's equilibrium potential its happy place would be if the inside of the cell was plus 60. So the driving force for sodium is huge. It's actually 130 millivolts, right? That's the difference between where the membrane is and sodium's equilibrium potential. What about at the peak of the action potential? At the peak of the action potential, the inside is about plus 30. You notice that driving force is gonna be much smaller. Now it's only 30 millivolts. So this explains why sodium's driving force is so much less at the peak of the action potential than it is at rest. Remember, the equilibrium potential doesn't change. Only the membrane voltage is changing. All right, let's look at potassium now and what potassium story looks like. Now, potassium's equilibrium potential is minus 90. Now, at rest, when the cell is minus 70, that's a very small driving force, right? It's only 20 millivolts. But look what happens at the action potential peak when the inside is plus 30. Potassium still wants it to be minus 90, right? The driving force for change is now huge. So now the difference for potassium is 120 millivolts. The definitions should now be getting more clear. The equilibrium potential is the membrane potential where there's no net flow, and the driving force is the difference between that value and where the membrane actually is. That's the key, guys. That's really all it is. Now, you have to remember that that equilibrium potential is constant, but the membrane voltage is constantly changing, so the driving force will also constantly change. So to finish up, maybe you're wondering what determines that magic place and that's where the physics comes in. And that's actually where the Nernst equation comes in. And don't be scared. Some of you may have to calculate this. Um, some of you, it's just going to help to know the variables that are involved, yeah? Because most of these are constant for us. So all we really need to know is the extracellular and intracellular concentrations. And I just want to show you the math because it's really not that bad. Like I said, most of these are constants. We're going to be at 37 degrees C in the human body. The valence, that is the Z, is plus one because we're talking about potassium, right? It would be plus two for calcium ions, etc. So given those two values, intracellular and extracellular, if you do the math, you get minus 90 millivolts. 
that is where that equilibrium potential for potassium comes from. So you can very quickly actually calculate any equilibrium potential value that you want. And it's so cool to be able to do that because, gosh, it's fun. Okay, it's not, but it's good to know, right? Thank you so much for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. I hope that was helpful. Please show your support by clicking those buttons. Like, share, subscribe. Join me on Facebook. Follow on Twitter. Good luck.